This is Steve here doing the first in a series of videos on my favorite tools. Uh, the point of these videos is to kind of just not go over a very specific tool by, by brand, but just a type of tool that I've come to love over the years. Um, so if you're a DIYer, you're just beginning um, and you're buying different tools, seeing what you need, um, I'm going to do some videos on tools that are somewhat obscure or uh, kind of maybe you think you might not need and just kind of go over uh, what kind of uses they have and the uses that I have used for them. So I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm going to go over what the, what the tool can do and do a quick demonstration at the end. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the uh, scenarios that I have run into. So the first tool is an oscillating tool. And basically what this is, is it's a tool. Put a saw blade at the end, other things I will get a, get a new will fit on this. Um, but generally for sawing. And you could do uh, flush cuts with it. So anything that's protruding, whether it's a pipe, nail, piece of wood, you can flush, flush cut it right off. Um, also, um, where I get great use out of it is for plunge cuts. You can plunge it directly into drywall, into wood um, to make cuts, cuts along it. And how it works is this blade basically shakes back and forth. So I'll turn it on. And as, you can, as you can see there, it just shakes back and forth. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it, it's not a big ro ro rotating blade. It doesn't make a lot of racket. This one's like just over five amps. It doesn't use a terrible amount of power. Um, so it gives you a lot of control. I can often use this with one, one hand. Also provides a lot of precision with your, with your cuts too. So anyway, blades all fit on here. I'll kind of get into the patterns in a minute, but you just push them in to click them out. I'll click them on for this model. You um, pull this out and the blade pops right out. Um, this is a Bosch and it also has a, I think most of them have this. There's a little dial here. You can change the speed. I pretty much always keep the speed at one. Um, if I need to do a rough cut, I will uh, turn it up more. So this model also comes with a light up on top. Um, as you can see the cord here, this is a corded model. There's a lot of cordless too. Um, Corded and cordless have pros and cons to them. This isn't a tool I use too often, so I don't mind having a corded version. Overall, in general, I like having corded because I know I'm going to have this tool the rest of my life, whereas uh, cordless, I'm going to have to get new batteries, and then the tool maker is going to switch their tool line with a new battery, and before you know it, um, I'm not going to be able to use my tool. So, um, anyway, this tool comes with a lot of attachments uh, to it. This model that I I got, if you purchase one of these, whatever you have, there'll be all sorts of ta attachments that fit with it. Um, the blade I have on now is your standard uh, kind of just wood cut there uh, with the bigger, bigger teeth. It's got the depth markers on it and all. Uh, probably one of my favorites is the car carbide. It's got smaller teeth, but this can cut pipe, nails, um, screws, and things of that sort, and uh, other hard materials. That's the same one I have on the saw. This is a uh, very interesting one. It's got the little small teeth on it, so this will shake back and forth. And this is great for plunge cuts and drywall. So let's say you have to put an electric box in the wall for a light switch. You, you know, you mark out your lines, and then you know you just make your cut. Uh, for the for the shorter ends, you can use the carbide blade or that one. So this is a very handy um, blade to have. Uh, this is for soft material. This is uh, if you're trying to pry up uh, like adhesive. If there's like adhesive under floor tile and things like that, this will shake under there and get that out. Uh, so th th this is a very handy blade to have. And then the other attachment I have is a uh, sander pad. And uh, this one came with uh, wood pads and paint. So you can, sand wood and, uh, you can sand wood down, you can sand paint off wood. Uh, they also make uh, pads for setting down rust and for getting thin set off the back of uh, of uh, tiles and things of that sort. Um, so I'll move on to another use. Well, I was just talking about the dry drywall thing. One thing that's really great about this tool, it makes that small sh shaking mo motion. Um, so it's not kicking dust up all over the place. It's a it's a quiet tool and it's not a very messy tool. Um, so you don't have to. If you're putting an electric box in and using this, um, you don't have to, you know, put tarps and, uh, you know, cloth over all the furniture and this and that. 
you can hold the tool in one hand, and if you want to, you can hold a shop vac in the, uh, the, uh, the other hand. That's what's really, really great about this. Uh, for thin drywall, about half inch, you normally use a jab saw, which is kind of a sharp saw. You poke it in and just cut. Um, one reason I love this tool with drywall, uh, my home was built in the 50s, so the drywall's like, it's like three quarters of an inch thick, and then they still put plaster on it. So it's like a one inch thick wall. At that, um, and I can't use a jab saw on that. You just can't jab through plaster and start cutting. Um, it is not e easy to do. Uh, so this uh, tool makes me, uh, makes putting um, holes in the wall very, very easy. So, and you can also plunge into wood to make holes in wood or, com or composite deck boards if you're putting deck lighting in or things of that sort or a new post. Um, there are all sorts of things for that. So now I am going to run into some of the uh, kind of the real world scenarios that I've used this for. And the first one is, uh, these are my uh, scrap woods here. So we're just going to imagine that these are things. Let's imagine uh, this is uh, the floor joist up in uh, an attic. Um, and this is a floorboard up in the attic. So I was installing recessed lights and I needed to get under some floorboards in the attic uh, to, put my, uh, to put my cans in and wire them up. But I had these floorboards over them. These floorboards are like 70 years old. Um, they're very, they're very, very um, brittle. So I couldn't just get a crowbar and like a hammer and uh, pull them up. I didn't want to get a circular saw and make a huge mess and potentially hit nails and things of that sort. So what I did was I had to put my recess light here. I uh, took this tool and I plunge cut it right center of the joist all across. And I was able to basically cut that board right halfway over the joist and pull it out, wire up my recess lights, and then place it right back in so it rested on. And it was almost like nothing ha happened. Um, so this, this tool came in very, very, very handy for that. Um, another use is I was replacing the doors, the interior doors of my house about two years ago. And let's imagine, hopefully this stays up. This is the framing. Uh, this is the door jam here. Um, so this is what holds the door and the hinges and all that stuff. And this is the framing the door is attached to. I was replacing the door in the bathroom and uh, there was a marble threshold in between both sides of the door jams. Um, so I just couldn't pry out and kick the door jams in and pull out the door. Uh, so what I did was I put the carbide blade on this and I stuck it in between the framing and the jam and I just cut all the nails out um, to release the door. And then I just pulled out the door and uh, came out ni nice and easy. The other option, of course, was to cut the door jam in, in, in half, but this made um, uh, a little less mess. So it was, it was, it was very handy for that. Uh, another great use I've used it for, uh, let's say this is a shelf here, okay? And the shelf is uh, screwed in or nailed from behind, or I'm sorry, screwed in or nailed from behind, and it's in like a pantry or something like that. This makes really thin flush cuts. So just get in there with the car carbide blade, cut the nails holding up the shelf, um, pull out the shelf. Um, so if you got to remove a few shelves in the um, pantry, this uh, tool comes in handy for that. And you can get nice flush cuts with it so you won't damage uh, the vertical shelf so supports that, that much. Um, another, kind of my last real world scenario here is I was building my shed and I had my, uh, basically one of my uh, roof joists on the shed was poking out a little too far where the fascia, imagine that this is fascia roof joist. Um, the roof joist kind of poked out a little bit um, so I was able to get in there and uh, trim it down about an eighth of an inch. So the fascia was nice and flush. Uh, it's actually on the end. So anyway, um, I've had a lot of great uses out of this. Another thing it's good for, you can cut pipe in tough places. Uh, whenever rust removal, you can remove paint. Um, putting in electric boxes is great for that. Um, another kind of common use is uh, cutting trim, uh, trim around doors. If you got to cut the bottom a little bit because you have a tile floor that's going to raise everything up, um, this is a good tool for that. So anyway, enough about me ranting about all the uses. Um, I'm going to do a kind of a quick demonstration with it. And what I have here is I just kind of threw a little shim in the vise, 
and uh, with one hand I'm just going to uh, cut the shim in, in half. Keep in mind I have this on one speed um, and I'm going to use one hand because I'm holding my phone with the other. So. control with it with just one arm it it cut quick um this is kind of a thin board it didn't flop around a lot and uh, i was able to get in there nicely and as you can see it really did not create much of a uh, mess here uh so anyway that just about concludes my video like i said there's a ton of different com companies make these this is bosch so it's a little bit up on the higher end there's cordless versions corded versions and there's attachments galore Oh, one thing I left out, Bosch uses the star lock um, for their tools. Uh, it's kind of the star lock pattern is how it secures in. Um, I, I think they're like one of the only brands or the only brand that uses the specific star lock. Uh, a lot of the other tools use just a flat uh, lock on. So, and another thing too is you can lock these on at any angle you want. It doesn't have to be straight out. So... But anyway, um, if you're ser searching for one of these, if you're thinking, thinking about buying one of these, um, or you just found out about them, um, I really hope this video helped you out, and thank you for watching.